Valentine's bouquets come in all shapes and prices, but how do you know which one's best when there's so many out there to choose from? Well, it's simple. 1-800-Flowers.com is your Valentine's go-to. Right now, when you order early, you can get 24 multicolored roses for only $29.99 or upgrade to 24 romantic red roses for only $10 more. It's an unbelievable Valentine's offer from 1-800-Flowers. 24 multicolored roses for just $29.99 Or upgrade to red roses for only $10 more. Roses from 1-800-Flowers are picked at their peak, shipped overnight to ensure freshness and her amazement. 24 multicolored roses for only $29.99 or an upgrade to 24 red roses for just $10 more is the perfect reward for thinking ahead. Look, make sure you lock in this offer. It's only good while supplies last. To order 24 multicolored roses for $29.99 or upgrade to 24 red roses for only $10 more, go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click on the radio icon, and enter the code WINGO. That's 1-800-Flowers.com and enter code WINGO. Order today at 1-800-Flowers.com, code WINGO. Former Patriots quarterback Drew Bledsoe in a few minutes to get his takeaway on what he saw in Super Bowl 52, which was one for the ages. Uh, this hour of Golic and Wingo brought to you by La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book at LQ.com and win at business. And, of course, Mike, it was the Philadelphia Eagles that came away with the big win over the New England Patriots, 41-33 in Super Bowl 52. Nick right. Foles, your MVP. And that's going to lead to another big win for the city of Philadelphia because it was, this all started with Lane Johnson saying, hey, if we win a Super Bowl, I'll buy beer for everybody. Yes, it, yes, he did. And then Bud Light, who's the uh, official mm-hmm. beer sponsor of the NFL, chipped in and said, if they do this, we'll find a way to take care of you, Lane, and have your back. So Lane Johnson, the starting right tackle, after the game, after the win, was asked about the whole Bud Light thing. What are you gonna, how are you going to celebrate tonight? Probably going to get drunk, to be honest with you. You're going to get drunk? Yeah. Next, next question, yeah. The Bud Light deal with the city of Philadelphia. I haven't talked to Bud Light, um, but hey, I, I'm in on my part. I'm a man of my word, so whatever happens, whatever happens, happens. We'll party on. I hope you all like Bud Light. <laughs> I hope you do too, because it's coming, Mike. Yeah, and Bud Light has jumped in. They said they would take care of Philadelphia, and this is how they plan on doing it. Uh, they're going to celebrate with fans in taverns along Victory Lane. On the day of the parade, which we think is what? Uh, I think it's Wednesday. 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 Uh, they're going to invite all fans, 21 and over, to join in raising the kingdom's favorite light lager in celebration of the big win. Look for Bud Light reps at multiple taverns along the parade route. Uh, where they will buy fans one Bud Light, and they, of course, they say congrats. Please drink responsibly, which you should. Absolutely. But so they're going to be along the taverns, along the parade that, that room. That won't be happening, by the way. Yes, no, <laughs> but you're going to say it. Uh, Philly, Philly. So they will be in taverns, and they'll be buying beers for people along the the parade route in the tavern. So they're going to. They're, what? Boy, it couldn't have worked out better for them. Huh? Absolutely. Kidding me? It's a it's a great publicity for them. And yep. Lane Johnson got it, and Bud Light had had his back. So congratulations. Mm-hmm. The kingdom will be rewarded. Yes, they will. That kingdom along Victory Lane. That parade will be coming Wednesday. Where so it will be Philly, Philly. Not, 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 exactly yeah. right. It will be Philly, Philly this one time. <laughs> yep. So that's the that's the winning locker room. Right. As always, there's a completely different dynamic in the losing locker room. And look, there's going to be changes in New England. There are always changes in New England. Uh, there's always changes after someone lo- wins or loses. Oh the yeah, Super Bowl. absolutely. I mean, no, no team has ever stay, stays intact the very next year. But we we thought for a lot of reasons it might be head coach Bill Belichick or quarterback Tom Brady. However. Uh, you can add another name into the fray in New England, tight end Rob Gronkowski, who had a monster second half and was really the reason that they got back into the game offensively after being limited to just one catch for nine yards in the first half. Uh, he was asked about his potentially retiring after the season, and here was what Gronk had to say. Here was what Gronk had to say. Okay. Definitely going to look at my future, for sure. I'm going to sit down the next couple of weeks and uh, see where I'm at. Gronk, what would make you retire? I'm, I'm not ready for that, these type of questions right now. I mean, I'm just going to look, uh, sit down, reflect on the season. Uh, probably talk to my teammates. Uh, we fought all year long. All the receivers, running backs, linemen. I mean, we put we put all the work in together. So um, I'm just going to reflect on the season, proud of the boys, and just see what happens. So th- that was a, like a normal answer. Right. But there was something that happened before that that kind of raised your eyebrow. Correct. Before that first 
a question about what would make you retire. Someone went to Gronk and said, Gronk, we're hearing that you're talking about retirement uh, before the game. And Gronk turned to him and said, how did you hear that? In other words, it took him by surprise that something he had said in private to either a player, a coach, uh, a personal friend of his, someone on the training staff, we don't know who, that conversation had been had, and Gronk felt like that was something that he told someone in confidence, and lo and behold, it got out there. To me, that makes it much more intriguing than, hey, I'm just yeah. in the moment here. Because this is the exact sort of same question uh, that Tom Brady got after the loss, and here was his response. Um, I expect to be back, so we'll see. I mean, it's 15 minutes after the game ended, so I'd like to process this a little bit, and I wouldn't see why I wouldn't be back. Listen, all he said is he wants to play those mid-40s. I highly doubt a loss in the Super Bowl yep. is going to all of a sudden spiral him into retirement. Unless so, others around him <clears throat> convince him. Well, it's, it, it sounds like his wife, Giselle, has wanted him to retire for years, so I don't... Yeah. Again, I don't think a guy comes out and says as much as he said about playing into his mid-40s, about how well he takes care of himself, about this guru guy he has around him, and all of a sudden, after a Super Bowl loss, says, you know what? Change my mind. I'm done. Don't see that happening one bit. Bill yeah. Belichick, the only way he's not the coach in there is let they trade him, right? He's not retiring. Bill Belichick isn't retiring, in my opinion, and they're not trading him somewhere else, right? I don't think that's happening. No. So I think Bill Belichick is going to be back. I do. The eyebrow does get raised with Gronk having a private conversation and then wondering how that got out. Uh, for those wondering, Gronk has two more years on a deal where it's eleven million dollar hit next year and twelve million the year after that. He's a guy reportedly that doesn't spend his his salary. It's all just his endorsement money. Again, how he true that is, that cash, I don't yeah. know. But it, but it, you know, I'm sure he doesn't pay for a lot in life. I mean, the guy has. You know, he's living life to the fullest, and I mean that in a good way, and more yes. power to him. He is, I think he's a fun, fun guy who's, oh, oh, by the way, one of the great tight ends to ever play this game. Arguably the greatest. I, I, I know, and, and I think he even understands what a target he is. He's had the back surgeries. He had the concussion. He realized guys are just going to try and, and, and just smoke him as hard as they can because he's so big or take his knees out uh, as well. It's very, very, very difficult for him, but in, uh, I'm going to say it, I, I think – Every single one of them will be back on New England next year playing again. Well, one one thing we probably know he doesn't pay for is double back wine because he probably gets that from uh, the former Patriot, Drew Bledsoe. There you go. The four-time Pro Bowler who joins us now on Golik and Wingo. Drew, thanks for getting up early with us this morning. If you could, the, your biggest takeaway from what you saw in Super Bowl 52, the one thing that stood out more than anything, what was it? Well, first, I want to be clear. Uh, no, Gronk pays retail, buddy. I, mean, I am not sending him free wine. My, my brother pays retail, man. I'm not in this. Is not a charity business, man. I'm making wine to. Get there you go. And, and Gronk would hurt you too if you had to give him free stuff. Yeah. No, the the, uh, the the my my biggest takeaway from the game last night. First of all, just what a game, man. It right. was so fun, man. I just I, I wanted it to go on forever. Uh, but the, uh, the, the strength of the Philadelphia Eagles going forward is pretty scary. Um, you know, they get their borderline MVP, uh, quarterback back next year. They get, uh, I think, I think Jason Peters is back, right? You know, they're, they're, yes, perennial they're expecting all pro him back, left yeah. tackle. Mm-hmm. I mean, people forget what a big deal that is. You lose an all pro left tackle. That can be devastating to a lot of teams. Um, and now they've got, just an embarrassment of riches because you're sitting there on a Super Bowl MVP quarterback. Uh, that if you know if somebody wants to trade for him, they better bring a, a really nice package. So all of a sudden, then there's draft picks and other players and so on. Uh, young team. So I think the Eagles are really scary going forward. Why were the Eagles able to do what other teams didn't? Well, they didn't hold the lead because New England did end up getting the lead, but then they took the lead back and then came up with the big play. That's usually, you know, vintage. Tom Brady, New England time. Why, were, why, in your mind, do you think Philadelphia was able to hold that off? You know, um, I said during the week, uh, and I did a handful of interviews. You know, first of all, I really like Nick Foles' game, and I always have. This was not a big surprise to me last night that he was able to play at that level. Uh, but the other thing that, that's really unique is when you have two ex NFL quarterbacks as your head coach and your offensive coordinator. You're bringing guys that have so much experience in game planning. These are not, uh, you know, these are quarterbacks that had multiple head coaches and different coordinators, and they were in all kinds of different systems. So they bring a lot of creativity. And when you watch what the Eagles do 
uh, up front from a, a blocking scheme standpoint. They they change the angles of their blocking schemes for their guys so much. They're bringing guys in motion. Uh, they're trapping. They're pulling guys. Um, and then uh, you, you know you combine that, and you have got a good strong play action game. I, th- I think they're, they're what they're doing offensively. Um, you know the NFL is not a game of innovation, uh, but they are uh, bringing some innovation, uh, which is fairly unique uh, to their blocking schemes up front. Drew Bledsoe, four-time Pro Bowl quarterback, former Patriot quarterback, joining us on Golik and Wingo. And one of the innovations, Drew, we certainly saw out of Doug Peterson and his coaching staff was there was no fear. I mean, he went for that touchdown at the end of that half on fourth and goal on that game-winning touchdown drive. He went for it on fourth and one right around midfield. I mean, he was pretty clear, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down swinging. Well, it's just smart football. I mean, you, know, you look at the, 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 you know, what the Patriots do to teams, they get conservative. Um, all you have to do is look at last year's Super Bowl. You look at the AFC Championship game. Uh, the minute teams get conservative against the Patriots, they're dead because the Patriots are going to, they're just going to keep coming at you. Um, you know, now obviously, you know, if, if he hadn't, if they hadn't converted those, those fourth downs, we're having a totally different conversation right, here about right. what an idiot he is. Uh, but, uh, but in order to, to beat the Patriots, um, and it was again proved last night, you know, you have to stay aggressive the entire game. Uh, because the Patriots are going to stay aggressive the entire game. What do you think of the fact that the two coaches leave? We saw this once before after Super Bowl years ago when both the O coordinator and D coordinator, Charlie Weiss and Romeo Cornell, left. Now Matt Patricia and Josh McDaniels are going to leave. Uh, we'll see if any other coaches go with them as well. Uh, but how, in your mind, does Bill Belichick uh, work around that? You know they've just they've been able to survive it in the past. It'll be interesting to see what they do going forward. But they've got a uh, they've got a um, you know a culture and a system uh, in place there that uh, allows new coaches to, to come in from the outside or to rise up from from uh, in, internally um, and continue to be successful. Uh, and then you put that together with uh, you know with Tommy playing quarterback. Um, you know he's he's probably you know, he knows more more football than. Than probably any offensive coordinator in the league, um, you know, so that makes it uh, you know both daunting and uh, and uh, exciting for a coach to come in there. Man, you can, you can come in there; it's going to be a great job, but you better bring it because Tommy's going to challenge you at everything. Well, he, he certainly will. As Drew Bledsoe was with us, the four-time Pro Bowler, and check out his double back wine; it's uh, exceptional, and nobody gets it except that they pay retail, apparently. And not even Rob Gronkowski. But were you surprised at all, Drew? by the way Rob answered that question. He was asked a question about, I heard you've been talking about retirement before the game, and his first response was, how did you hear about that? Which makes me think it's a little more than just, hey, it's the end of the season and I'm a little banged up. Yeah, I mean, I, you, know, I, you look at the way Gronk plays and you look at the way that he's targeted and, and the way that he's hit, um, you know, he prepares his butt off. I mean, people see his... Uh, you know his his lifestyle and see him partying and having fun and all that stuff. But he also he he takes it as a challenge. He tries to beat uh, Tommy to the uh, to the facility every day and and uh, he tries to be the hardest working guy on the team. Um, and it's uh you know it's it's something that uh, that's changing I think in in the league now with um, you know with some of the concussion uh, issues and then with just the way that his body is treated. Uh, plus, you know, Gronk's going to be able to find something to do after football too. He's got a big enough personality. So, um, you know, I'd be surprised if he doesn't if he doesn't you know keep playing. Uh, I'd be super disappointed as a fan. I think he's he's just a remarkable talent. Um, but uh, but it's also something that I think you might you know we've we've already seen it with some younger players in the league. Uh, and it may be something that continues to happen for certain guys, particularly if they've sustained a lot of injuries. Drew, did you see any issue with either of the controversial touchdowns uh, catches for the Philadelphia Eagles between Corey Clement and uh, Zach Ertz? You know, the fir- the first one, I kind of thought they were going to overturn. Um, you weren't alone there. Yeah, yeah, I, I was. I was sort of surprised. Um, you know, the second one, the second one. Um, you know, it was so um, reminiscent of the of the Steelers play, which I totally disagreed with in the uh, in the the, uh, the playoff game. Um, but thankfully, I think they made that call the, the right way. You know, the guy catches the ball, takes three steps. You know, I mean, he's a football player. He's turned into a runner, uh, crosses the plane. Um, you know, that's a touchdown. But I do have a I do have a solution um, for the whole thing. And, and I don't know if you guys have talked about this before, but. Um, it's the, the, the it's the six year old rule. Um, you know, I think in New York they need to have a panel of six year olds <laughs> to, 
sitting in a room, <laughs> and when one of these plays comes up, they just put the play on and they ask a group of six year olds, "Hey, did he catch it?" They're like, yeah, they, he caught it. Okay, well that's a catch. Hey, did he catch it? No, he dropped it. Okay, then that's not a catch. I think it'd be way simpler than what they're trying to do now. <laughs> well, it absolutely would. We always joke, Drew. Whenever we put up the catch rule, it takes three pages to put it up there on the screen and forty-seven seconds to get through. So clearly, they've got to simplify it. Golik, by the way, being who he is, went the other way. Instead of a six-year-old, he just wants to go to some bar and do like a, a gladiator thumbs up, thing. Thumbs, thumbs down. up, thumbs down, catch or no catch. <laughs> there you go. But, I like it. But we're there's got to all... there's got to be a better way because what they're doing right now, trying to explain all this stuff man i'm so confused man yep. i just wanted to can I catch the ball or do you not catch it okay cool let's go on and it's changed completely from when you played right that's the thing that's so frustrating yeah it has and it just is it's yeah it's just it's and the the thing that was thing that, that that they have the one part of it they have uh that they have seemed to have gotten right is that they they rule things a catch um on the field far more often the thing that was most frustrating um, you know, for me, was that, that sometimes they, I think it, there were a couple of times where, you know, they'd rule it incomplete on the field, um, or, uh, you know, rule that it was an incomplete pass and looked like a fumble, and, and, and then they would, uh, and then you couldn't review it for some reason, and just said we had to move on, so we didn't have a chance to challenge some plays that I thought we should have been able to challenge. Well, yeah, it's been too confusing. We had Roger Goodell on last week, and he admits that the, the rule is bad. The, the refs are interpreting the rule the right way, but the rule needs to be updated, and we'll see what happens with them going forward. Uh, Drew, uh, we appreciate you being with us. I, I was kind of half listening to that last answer because I'm going through your gallery of photos on oh, doubleback.com. Yeah. Looks pretty good to me, my friend. I think Trey's going to put an order in. Yeah, well, you know, we'll, yeah, we'll it's, talk. Uh, it's, uh, we're, we're actually, it's, it's cool timing for us. We're releasing our 2015 vintage tomorrow. That um, uh, it's it's our best vintage to date, um, and uh, it's going to go really fast this year. So if you uh, if you're interested, man, get in get in there quick. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't I, you won't you won't you won't be disappointed, man. It's a money back guarantee. Money, oh, I like that. that guarantee. And if you well ever want to go old school grape stomper, I'm your man. I can do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure what we would call that one. Um, Fungicide, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I, we might have a little trouble marketing it, though, but, but I'll keep you in mind. Don't Thanks, let man. his toes anywhere near your grapes. <laughs> Trust me, everybody wins in that scenario. <laughs> Thanks, Drew. Drew, we appreciate you being with us. Thanks, hey. man. Right on. Thanks, guys. Philadelphia free from that... M- shackle of not ever <laughs> having won a Super Bowl anymore. That is in the books. Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2. Presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us via the Shell Penzoil performance line. And Mike, I think that's the weirdest thing about this. Philadelphia is a city, if you're not from there, not many people like it. You yeah, know, they, yeah. um, those guys are crazy. Somehow this team became very beloved by 31 other fan bases. Well, it does. NFL. You know, I mean, you have the, the rising star, obviously, in Carson Wentz, you know, who was going to be the MVP this year. And, and they love their blue collar players. Yep. The blue collar workers, guys that go out there and, uh, with, with that grit and just play hard. And that's what this team is full of. A lot of them. There are obviously some great players on the team, but there's a lot of different players that you can go to that can make plays. And those fans appreciate that. And, uh, Boy, they're going to show their appreciation. They did last night, certainly in celebrating, but when that team lands today, that airport is going to be a madhouse. Absolutely, and the parade is going to be Wednesday, and we'll see what happens when all that goes through Broad Street and the rest of downtown Philly. But, of course, uh, we've already had the chance to speak to one of the Super Bowl champs. We had safety Malcolm Jenkins on earlier today, and the first thing I asked him if he could put into words just how he felt when this game was finally over and he knew that he had done it. That last play, they, they threw that ball up, and it kind of got bounced around a little bit. But uh, when it hit the ground, I think you can see all of the defenders kind of pause for a second, had to kind of look up at the clock and realize, like, we had just become world champions. Uh, in the, the season that we just finished out, the way it started, the, way, the, the amount of things we've had to fight through, the amount of uh, trust that we've had to have in each other throughout the year, um, it's just an amazing feeling. And to take people there, Malcolm, that last play, like you said, everybody sees the 6'6 Gronk with the ball going up and, and while he's the closest receiver. And then the convergence of defensive players on the ball was incredible. But just take us through that play when the ball's in the air for those of us that will never be in that position. Yeah, I mean, for us, we've talked about these type of situations all year. Uh, and, and rarely do you come across them, uh, and especially with this much on the line. 
Uh, but with that ball in the air, it's just like everything's in slow motion. <laughs> you, yeah. you obviously see Gronk. Everybody goes for the ball, and when the ball doesn't immediately hit the ground, like your heart drops, <laughs> and you're just hoping nobody catches the tip, and it hits the ground, and everything just catches back up to speed, and it just all sets in that we just did it. You know, we we just finished and put the explanation point on on the entire season. We are world champions, and now the countdown is for us to get back to Philly as fast as possible and join the celebration. Malcolm Jenkins with us here <laughs> after a Super Bowl win over the uh, New England Patriots. i got to say, watching that play, the first thing I thought of was that scrum play against the Falcons last year where somehow Julian Edelman came up with that yeah. catch. I was like, oh my gosh, are they going to do it again? But they didn't. Nope. They didn't, Malcolm. You guys won it. Um, they did it. Just, they just, did it. just so people <laughs> understand... Take, take us through what your life has been from the game to doing this interview right now, because I don't think a lot of people understand that you are probably completely sleep-deprived. I could tell you a million things, and your brain would probably believe it just because the disconnect between body and soul is probably pretty crazy right now. <laughs> yeah, we hadn't been asleep yet. Uh, we, we obviously uh, had the celebration on the field right after the game. That took you know a while. We got in the locker room and partied some more. Yeah, we left you did. the locker room and immediately went to the after party uh, and then just got back to the hotel maybe an hour ago. Um, and we probably won't go to sleep uh, until we get on this plane or probably until tomorrow. So we're on cloud nine right now, man. Like I said, everything, you know, we're just trying to get back to Philly as fast as possible. We know that they are partying like never before, and we are trying to get back to that. Super Bowl champion Malcolm Jenkins, Eagle Safety, joining us on Golik and Wingo, and that's got to be a nice ring to it uh, to hear the Super Bowl champion part. So in this game, there it, it took all the way until that 33-32, nine minutes to go in the game, when all of a sudden New England got the lead. So take us now to the mentality of you guys held the lead, and this was a game where both defenses we know gave up a lot of yards, and now New England takes the lead. So what was the talk on the sideline? Well, the biggest thing is, you know, our offense was rolling, and we didn't expect them to slow down. Uh, they took the lead when New England's defense actually got a stop, and our defense was was talking the entire second half, like, we just need one stop. One stop would win us the game, um, and we didn't get that stop until the end. And when our offense took the lead late in the game, we, we realized that was our time, that we were going to be on the field for our entire team and our entire season. And nobody doubted anything. Nobody batted an eye. We didn't have to have a big huddle or rallying point. Everybody understood what the time was and what needed to be done. Um, and we stepped up. We knew that that play was going to come, and somebody was going to be that hero. Somebody was going to go down in history. And that player just happened to be Brandon Graham and Derek Barnett scooping up that fumble. Um, and that was the play we needed, the, the one stop that we needed on defense to get us a world championship. Uh, and and what a <laughs> we wouldn't write the script any any better. Well, look, man, Malcolm Jenkins with us. Don't sell yourself short, man. Let let's just make people understand about you. Uh, you started your career in New Orleans, uh, a team that had never won anything in their forty two years, and then you guys upset Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts in Super Bowl forty four to take them down thirty one seventeen, and now you end a fifty six year drought. Uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. So you can talk about everybody else, but it's pretty clear, Malcolm Jenkins, you're the reason the Eagles won the game. I mean, that's obvious. <laughs> I'm starting to see a little trend there. There it know? is. But, there it uh, is. Nah, I mean, it's it's one of those things, you know, I, I've been blessed to be a part of some some amazing teams. That, that team in New Orleans, uh, to bring that Super Bowl to that city uh, when it had never even been to the Super Bowl was, was amazing. My first year in the league. But this one is something special to be able to be a leader on this team, uh, to be a, a key contributor in, in all the things that we've went through this year uh, to bring it back to the city of Philadelphia is something, something special. Uh, you know, when I came here, all I could ever think about was what this parade would look like when we won this Super Bowl. Uh, and I'm so excited to take part in that. Again, Malcolm Jenkins joining us, Eagle Safety Super Bowl champion. And on a personal note, most of my career was with the Eagles, and, and I and of a nine-year career, six were there, and we never never got to the Super Bowl. So I can't tell you how happy I am for you guys to get there, just like what you said, for those fans, because those fans are fantastic. And also another feeling I never felt in nine years was the clock hitting zero and just 
just the emotion that you would have with your teammates. I try and explain all the time that you spend so much time with your teammates throughout the season. If you could take us on the field and in the locker room and just how it was with you and your teammates when you got the ultimate goal in team sports. Man, I, I probably broke down about five times on the, on the field. It's just when you when that clock hits zero and that confetti is in the air and you just take the time to soak in the environment and you realize that all that you've sacrificed, all that you've put in for an entire year, um, it's been worth it. And you've reached the mountaintop. That mountaintop experience is like nothing else that you can, you can find. Um, and then to get in that locker room and to just celebrate with everybody from the equipment managers to the practice squad players to coaches, players, it's just it's an amazing feeling. Um, and it's one that every team in this league scratches and scrapes for uh, to get to. And only one team gets to enjoy that at the end of the year. Um, and we are blessed and, and grateful to be able to be that team to celebrate that at the end of the year. Well, look, man, go celebrate it because we're yeah. looking at pictures in Philadelphia of people oh. doing backflips off the awning of the Ritz-Carlton <laughs> Hotel. Uh, they, they are clearly ready to see you guys and enjoy yourself. Malcolm, I, I know you're a little sleep-deprived right now, but congratulations. Yes, enjoy absolutely. it. What a special moment. And every dog has their day. And the dogs in Philadelphia came through yeah. one of the biggest upsets in Super Bowl history. Congrats, man. Just amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Absolutely amazing uh, what we saw. Listen, I'm jealous every year yeah. of... Hearing that, uh, and we're going to try and get tomorrow, hearing Jason Kelsey, their center. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Of just what it means when, you, when you're with a group of people for as long as you are and you're, you have one goal, one goal in mind, and you achieve it on just what that's, that's like. And I, I'm jealous every single year, every single year when that, when that Super Bowl winning team, that clock hits zero and they just look at one another and the, 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 the realness and the hugs and the I love you's out there is, is incredible. You know, real quickly, I was reminded after I did, po- when you said that, I was after doing post game Super Bowl 43 when the Steelers beat the Cardinals 27 23. And I was in there getting Ben and a couple of other people. Then Mitch Berger, who was the punter, got yeah. me, hey, congratulations. And he clearly wanted to talk. So we put the camera, and he went on for like 10 minutes, this diatribe of, you know, the people that believed in him, all this kind of, and none of it made air. <laughs> But right, I mean, right. you know, he he just couldn't stop. I mean, he couldn't stop talking about how much this meant to him, and you know, all this stuff. And the people that believed in him, and all the you know, he was going to. Re- to your point, it's it's an amazing feeling because yeah. it is it is so incredibly hard in a sport like football to stay together and stay healthy and do this thing once. And again, that's what makes what the Patriots have done so ridiculously yeah, right. remarkable that they've managed to do it so many times. I think we're going to find out at some point. Again, he was a day late to the Super Bowl, said he was sick and in the hospital, doesn't play, played 98% of the snaps this year. There is going to be more coming out, whereas we're finding out there are players that weren't happy about it. We'll get in more into this. I'm sure more will come out today. We'll talk about it more tomorrow as well. There's just no way, depending on matchups or whatever, that you don't take one snap. At, at Agreed. Like He's played in about so many of the different yeah. defensive, uh, you know, th- systems that they put in. So yeah, I, I do think it's going to be something more, and, and I would imagine at some point we'll find out. And we'll find out about it again yep. for sure. But here, here's how improbable this was. Forget the fact that uh, the Eagles were playing with their backup quarterback. Forget the fact that they were the underdogs and it was the Patriots they were playing against. Here's what happened. By the way, Malcolm Butler was not the only guy that didn't play in that game. Yeah. Patriots punter Ryan Allen did not punt. Not one. There was only one punt in the game. It was by the Eagles punter. He did hold, though. He, he was on the field. He did hold. But yes, and there was did. a bad hold yeah. uh, on a bad snap. So and a bad snap, but, but he but did not punt. If I had told you this ahead of time, Tom Brady would throw for 500 yards and three touchdowns. The Patriots would have three receivers <laughs> with over 100 yards. The Patriots would average more than five yards per rush. And have 113 yards on the ground. The Patriots would not punt, and the Eagles would miss an extra point and two two point conversions. Would there have been any way in your mind that you would have thought the Eagles could have won that game? No, absolutely not. Absolutely, positively not. That's why stats can be uh, deceiving. Well, or just irrelevant at some point. Yep. Look, some things are just meant to be. And I, I think you and I both felt that as we were down there for that week. I mean, 
the people in that stadium were clearly four, five to one. Right. Eagles fans over Patriots fans. They were everywhere in Minneapolis. Yep. You saw, you saw eight Eagles jerseys as opposed to one Patriots jersey. Mm-hmm. It, it, it just sort of built to this crescendo, you know? I mean, the same thing could have happened in Super Bowl 50. The Carolina Panthers were the highest scoring team in football. Right. And they only scored 10 points against yeah. the Denver Broncos. And the Broncos, First touchdown was a defensive play, and they didn't get another touchdown until another turnover inside the five yard line. Yeah, sometimes you just get the feeling things were meant to be. Yeah, I'm, I, but I, I'm gonna, I'll separate there. I'm not a meant to You're be not guy. With me on I, that I, one, I'm not a meant to be guy. No, I'm setting it up for you to be no, with me on I'm this, not. and you just shatter me like I, I shattered did. That I touchdown. did. I am not a meant to be guy at all. I'm not a fate guy at all. I just think, and I think you do as well. Looking at the football side of it, I, I think that. Eagles were a better team all the way around. They played better. I were and and I think in breaking down the game, they had other areas to go where New England is so good at taking away aspects of your game that Philly is so well rounded they had other places to go. Alshon Jeffrey hurt New England early. They shut him down with Stefan Gilmore, all yep. of a sudden took him and that was it. Well then Aguilar's catching balls, Ertz is catching balls, Clements catching balls out of the backfield. They had other places to go. You're doubling uh, Fletcher Cox. They don't get the pressure they normally get. It's uh Brandon Graham that gets the, the the sack fumble at the end. Somebody else step up. They have other people to step up. That and they're an aggressive team. You know, that's Doug Peterson. <laughs> they you take the personality Sunday. of a coach. They're aggressive. They don't sit back with a lead. They go forward with a lead, even though they lost this lead. They got it back, and they held it, and they're aggressive. That's the reason they won. And it's a team, Trey, that, that is put together to stay together right now for a while. From a contract situation, they're in pretty good shape. I believe the only starter not under contract <laughs> for 2018 uh, is Nigel Bradham. Yeah. 21 of their 22 about starters. That? Are locked in. Wow. And oh, by the way, let's talk about this one. Uh, their salary cap with their quarterbacks, Nick Foles and Carson Wentz combined under $15 million. For both. 14.9. There are 18 quarterbacks in the NFL whose salary cap hit next year is more than Foles and Wentz combined. Together. That's why I don't think they're going anywhere because I agree. you know, keep that guy there and yep. you're all set up in case you have another emergency and you don't know. Right. Carson Wentz was hurt in December. You just don't know if he'll be ready to go week one of the regular season. All right. That's it for a Super Bowl Monday. Coming up tomorrow, more fallout from the Eagles Super Bowl win, more information about mm. the Malcolm Butler yep. benching. Some things are beginning to trickle out and it's interesting. And Todd McJay will join us. Todd McShay will join us in studio with a new mock draft. Mock draft. Philadelphia. Enjoy the hell out of it. It's been a long time coming. Congrats.